So, using this very simple notation, uh, what can we do with it? Well, we can solve some problems. So, why don't we tackle this one together? Um, I'll give you a moment to jot down the critical details, but we've got a sphere. I've defined a radius for you. It's a, it's a strange sounding radius, but trust me that I'm trying to make the numbers nice for us in the future. So, square root of 26. We'll just consider a simple one centered at the origin for now. And then you get given two points, P and Q, that apparently uh, cut through, the line PQ apparently cuts through the sphere. So there's going to be a couple of points of intersection between the sphere and this line PQ, all right? Uh, so in fact, if you wanted to draw kind of, uh, you know, some rough version of this, I'm not going to try and draw a, uh, a sphere here, but there's my, my 2D diagram of my sphere, and then I'm cutting through. Um, I don't know where P and Q are, maybe P's here, maybe Q's there. Q could even be inside the circle. Actually, it's not too hard to work out if you wanted to whether P and Q are inside, because you can work out how far they are from the origin. Uh, but P and Q constitute a line, and then what I'm really looking for is, where are these two points where there's intersection with the sphere's surface? Do you understand the premise? Yeah. Okay. So now my question to you is, um, how do we go about this? So before I put pen to paper, I would love to hear your thinking on, this is a question which uh, we're going to spend some time on because there are several steps to it. So we want to break that down, right? So can anyone suggest what might be a good first step? Um, we're not actually going to do the step. I just want to work out the path before we do any working. What might be the first thing you want to do um, to start solving this question? Probably want to or some sort of like general equation because if you want to, you can make them into each other. The equation of this. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So I'm, I'm hearing a few different ideas there, right? So um, you started talking about having a general equation so we can equate them each other. So you're thinking back to the fact that in two dimensions, if we were trying to find points of intersection, and that's what this says, right? It doesn't use the phrase points of intersection, but where you meet the, the sphere's surface, um, that's what you're looking for. You want two equations and you just solve them simultaneously, right? So we want two equations and then Mrs. Isles, you said, well, we want the equation of the sphere, which is sort of what we were just talking about up above. What's the other equation that we need? Because I actually don't have any equations at all in this question. Yeah, I need, I need PQ's equation, right? So what I'm going to do, this is me thinking with you right now, okay? Um, I'm going to first maybe work out the equation of line PQ because we can review the fact of how we find the equations of a line. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, okay, what's the equation of the sphere? And then I'm going to solve those simultaneously. So just think about this for a moment, right? Once you solve this simultaneously, you're solving equation one, the line, and equation two, the sphere. But what you're going to get, like remember, the equation of a line in general, it'll be something like uh, r equals, uh, or maybe I will use l because um, we just talked about how r is dangerous to, to put in this context. Um, can you help me remember what's the general form of the equation of a line? It's got two pieces to it. It's the magnitude of the vector. Um, that's your like uh, the length. Is it the yeah, yeah, okay, very good. So there's a couple of vectors involved. It's a vector equation, right? So um, I heard uh, a U, so that what we, do you remember what we call this? This is getting onto the line. So this is what we call the position vector, right? And then we've got lambda, and there's a second vector here which tells us which way we're facing. So what did we call that again? Not the position vector. Direction. Direction vector, very good. Now, think about this, right? We're going to solve uh, this equation here, this one here, the line PQ, and we're going to solve it simultaneously with the equation of the sphere. So what you're going to get is something in terms of lambda. Like, you're going to get a lambda out of this. In fact, you might get two lambdas, right? Because I'm expecting, I'm anticipating there's a couple of points of intersection. So then, what do you do with those lambdas? Like, the lambdas are not the solution, right? What do I do with those? Values? Yeah, they're gonna, those values, right? I'm, I'm gonna need to substitute the lambdas into something, and there's gonna only be one equation which has lambdas in it, right? Which equation is that? 
Yeah, the line, right? The sphere is independent of lambda. We don't need that. So I'm going to substitute the whatever I get from step three. I'm going to substitute that into line PQ. Okay. So obviously you don't need to usually write this when you're you know solving a question. But because I've done lots of these questions before, I have this sort of one, two, three, four. It's an algorithm, if you like, set of steps to get the answer. I've got them kind of tucked away in the back of my mind. But I think it's really helpful to, especially because these questions are relatively new to us, um, to articulate it so we don't get lost as we're going through the question. Like, what do I do next? Where am I? Okay. So now we've charted our course um, and you know, eventually you'll get to a point where you don't need to write that down. You can just do it intuitively, uh, but let's have a go. So I'm going to do step one, uh, which is for line PQ. Now you've got two coordinates, right? So when I'm trying to work out what P, the line PQ is, the first thing I want to think about is well, what's the direction vector, the, the V as it were, that's going to be, um, going into my equation, right? So I'm going to work out what PQ is. Can you guys help me out? Are you good enough to go straight to the calculation or should we write some extra work in to help us? Uh, it would be 5 minus 3i plus 3 plus 1. Oh, uh, you're giving it to me. Sorry, you're giving it to me in component form, aren't you? Like, why didn't I do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 it don't, don't apologize. I started writing it in column form because I'm lazy, <laughs> but um, let's do, I, I think it's good. It's, it's actually very important. Um, even though component form is not what I instinctively go to because I just have to write extra stuff. It is really important that you can like comfortably use all of them. So let's, let's just run with it, right? So you said five minus three I, uh, can you keep on going for me? What's next? Yeah. And then it's three plus one J mm -hmm. and then it's uh, plus negative four plus two K. Well done. Okay, fantastic. So what we were doing there obviously was it was OQ and you're taking away OP. So there is a lot going on there because you're applying the negative at the same time, um, but you've done a great job, right? So well done. Let's tidy that up. So it looks to me like I'm getting two I plus four J plus uh, or minus rather two K. Does that sound all right? Okay, now this is um, this is PQ, right? And this is uh, the only vector that can be PQ. But I just want you to stop and think, right? What is the purpose of us working that out? Like, why is PQ important to me? That's the direction. Yeah. Very good. Now, this is important, right? Because I could just take this answer and keep going, and I would get a right answer. It would be fine, right? But remember that there's an infinitely, there, there's an infinite number of different equations that are all line PQ. This is the only vector that is P to Q, the interval, but the, the line PQ, which goes forever, right? It can use any direction vector that is uh, equivalent to this one. Now, what do we mean by equivalent? Like what could, can you give me another example of a vector that would still be just as good as PQ? 2PQ, yeah, 2PQ. Yep, any, any scalar multiple of PQ will do the job, right? 2PQ would work, one and a half PQ would work, minus PQ would also work. So because I'm using it, sorry, as a direction vector, right? What this tells me is, um, I might as well just pick the simplest scalar multiple of PQ just to make things easy for me, right? So if you got, if you were working um, out, you know, uh, a fraction in a, in a derivative, right? And you saw something like 3x on 6, that's still right, but you wouldn't write, like immediately you would instinctively simplify that, wouldn't you? And you would just say, okay, um, these two are equivalent and I can just keep going. So I want you to think now, what would be a more convenient scalar multiple of this to use for my direction vector? So I said it again, I, you were a bit garbled altogether. Uh, I plus 2J minus N. Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to use half PQ as my scalar multiple to, to use as my direction vector just because it's easier. Okay, so that's kind of the equivalent of, um, yeah, simplifying a fraction as it were. It's just, it's a bit sneaky because, you know, the question didn't say it's a fraction simplify, but it's because we know we're using it as a direction vector that we can do it. Okay, fantastic. So now I'm just about finished with um, part one of my question because I can now say that line PQ, uh, maybe I'll just use L, is equal to, uh, well, I can use either of uh, P and Q as my position vector, right? Let's just use P. 
3, negative 1, negative 2. Here comes the lambda that was mentioned before, and then we just decided, what's that? 1, 2, negative 1. Okay, so far so good. How are you feeling at the moment? Okay, happy times. So now we're up to step two. What we want is an equation for the sphere. Now, um, we, I've given you a relatively simple one here, right? So remember the centers at the origin. So therefore, what's going to go on the left-hand side? There's really not that much, actually. X squared, uh, magnitude, uh, just seven. Yep, so there's magnitude. Um, I'm just going to go straight for the vector equations. So in fact, I can just arbitrarily just say, hey, some, some vector, right? And then I'm equal to my radius. What was the radius in the question? Uh, yeah, square root 26. Now, uh, believe it or not, that's it. That's, that's all of step, uh, step two. Um, it's, it's finished at that point uh, because the equation of a sphere is beautifully simple. That's part of why we um, wanted to go in this direction. But now I, I have to sort of expand on this, right? Because I need to solve this simultaneously. So remembering, it might be helpful to write this as x, y, z, right? This is actually equal to the square root of 26. When I go to solve simultaneously, the thing that I'm solving simultaneously is this equation I just wrote with this one up here from that first step, right? So you actually need to be a bit careful here because you've got for your x and your y and your z, I've got an equivalent x and y and z from the line. So here's the x, don't forget there's a lambda hiding in there. Here is the y. And then here is the z. You've seen me do this before, right? 